Welcome. Good afternoon. I am Steve Luckner coming to you from the Right Side Broadcasting Studios in Auburn, Alabama. We have some video for you of President Trump signing the second of two executive orders he signed today. This executive order is an executive order on the waters of the United States rule. Now, before we play the video, I'm going to just uh, give you a little background about this executive order. But before that, I just want to say we hope you join us tonight because Right Side Broadcasting will be covering live President Trump's uh, speech to the joint session of Congress. So he will be speaking tonight. It's kind of like the State of the Union address. Actually, it's, it's really like the same time of year and everything. But when it's the first year of the presidential, of a president's term, they call it the address to the joint session of Congress, not the State of the Union. So it's basically this year's State of the Union address. We will be covering that tonight live here at Right Side Broadcasting. You can uh, come and watch it at 9 p.m. Eastern. That's when the speech starts. And we will have pre-show, I will be here for the pre-show, at 8 p.m. Eastern. So join us starting at 8 for coverage of President Trump's speech to the joint session of Congress tonight. Very exciting. So uh, this executive order is called, well, the press is calling it the Waters of the United States executive order. Why is it called this? Well, to understand this executive order, we got to go back to 1972 when the Clean Water Act was passed. I believe it was Clean Water Act and not Clean Waters Act. I'll assume it was Clean Water Act. That was an act of Congress. And what this did is this gave uh, the federal government jurisdiction over a bunch of the nation's waterways uh, and the power to uh, help clean up, clean up those waterways. But there were some issues uh, after this Clean Water Act was passed in 1972 about what waterways were covered exactly. So the actual language of the Clean Water Act said uh, that the federal government uh, had the, gave the federal government the ability to control the pollution in it, the phrase used was navigable waterways. I think it was navigable waters, but the key word was navigable. So, there's some question as to what does it mean to say navigable waterways? Like, are we talking about navigable by a boat? Uh, because you can imagine there are certain small streams that are certainly not navigable if we're talking about navigable by a normal sized boat. So the question started becoming like, how small of waterways does this Clean Water Act apply to? Does it give the power, does it give the federal government the power to regulate like small creeks and like big puddles on somebody's, uh, somebody's property? And this is especially relevant because remember the Clean Water Act was supposed to design, was designed to uh, allow the federal government to clean up the nation's waterways. So some people argued, well look, it can't just apply to like big waterways like giant rivers and stuff because there are all these small creeks and you know little ponds and stuff that flow into the bigger waterways. So these people argued Clean Water Act, if it's trying to clean up the big waterways, it'd be dumb if it didn't apply to the small waterways that flow into the big waterways because if it didn't apply to those, then people could just dump all their crap all they wanted to into the small waterways and it would just flow into the big waterways and pollute them. So a number of people argued that the Clean Water Act should apply to smaller water waterways and not big waterways. And the big waterways are what you might think is implied by navigable waters, which is the actual language of the act. But um, in 2001 and 2006, there were a couple of Supreme Court decisions. Uh, I don't know them off the top of my head, I am sorry, but you can look it up on the internet. But these Supreme Court decisions put some restrictions on how small of a waterways the Clean Water Act applies to. And they said it doesn't apply to the smallest of waterways. And uh, it, it focused on the language of navigable waterways that was uh, the actual used in the Clean Water Act itself. So in response to this, some people when, after the Supreme Court ruling said, well, we need to modify the Clean Water Act so that it applies to smaller waterways. So there were attempts to do this in, attempts to do this in Congress legislatively. And there was this thing called the Clean Water Restoration Act, which I believe, I know it was at least put up uh, in Congress or uh, brought to Congress in like one year, but I believe maybe in several years, like uh, in the late 2000s, it was proposed in Congress, but it never passed. And that act would have made it so that uh, it would have changed the language of the Clean Water Act. It wouldn't just be, and it would change the language from being navigable waters or navigable waterways, and it would have modified the language so that the Clean Water Act actually applied to smaller waterways. But that 
Clean Water Restoration Act to modify the original act never passed. So, uh, so basically, after you know, time went on, and there was still this confusion among some as to which waterways the Clean Water Act applied to, and also there was a desire among some to have it apply to smaller waterways than big waterways. So, uh, in 2015, the EPA, under the Obama administration, uh, created this rule, and this rule is called the Waters of the United States Rule. And this was not an act of Congress, this was just declared by the EPA. And basically this rule said that the federal government has control, uh, ha can, can enforce uh, pollution control on all of these small waterways that weren't initially thought to be covered by the Clean Water Act. So it basically said, you know, the Clean Water Act uh, can be applied to all these small waterways. Now, a number of people thought this was an overreach on the part of the EPA because, look, you know, as I said before, the Supreme Court had said the Clean Water Act itself doesn't apply to certain small waterways. It applies to navig navigable waters, but it limited the smallness of, w of the waterways to which the Clean Water Act applied. And as I said before, after that, those decisions in the late 2000s, some people tried to legislatively uh, change the Clean Water Act and modify it so that it would apply to smaller waterways. And some people said, well, after be, be, what happened is uh, they tried to modify it in, in the Congress and they failed. So then environmentalists just used the EPA and the EPA just unilater unilaterally declared, hey, this Clean Water Act now applies to these small waterways. Um, and a number of people were like, this is unconstitutional because uh, the Clean Water Act has, according to this side, according to this side of the story, Clean Water Act doesn't apply to these small waterways. So the EPA can't just declare now that the Clean Water Act applies to these small waterways. To make it a Clean Water Act apply to smaller waterways, you would need to change the law legislatively. You'd have to have Congress pass something. So after the in this 2015 waters of the United States rule was passed by the EPA, there were, I believe, a number of lawsuits filed against it. And eventually what happened is a federal court uh, put a stay on the waters of the United States, States rule. And the, the federal court basically said, we think there's a decent chance this rule by the EPA is unconstitutional, so we're not going to let it be enforced until the federal courts uh, decide whether it's constitutional or not. So as of right now, this Waters of the United States rule, which the EPA passed in 2015, wasn't being enforced, but in theory could still be enforced if the federal courts decided, hey, it's actually unconstitutional. Hey, actually, this Waters of the United States rule is constitutional. That brings us to today. So what happened today is President Trump signs an executive order. And in the executive order, he orders the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers to reconsider the waters of the United States rule. And what they're supposed to do is reconsider it based on whether they think it like contributes to the economy or it harms the economy and also whether it causes confusion or not. Now, the basic idea here is since the EPA is now in the Trump administration, we have Scott Pruitt who is President Trump's nominee being the head of the EPA. The thinking here is when the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers reconsider the waters of the United States rule, they will come back with a verdict of, we don't like this rule, and they'll end up get, getting rid of the rule or changing it greatly, that kind of thing. However, this process could take time. So I saw one thing today that said, I saw one thing online that said this process could take like at least a year for them to reconsider this rule. And the New York Times even said today the process of getting rid of the wars of the United States rule after this executive order might take longer than President Trump's first term. I don't, so I don't know exactly how long it'll take, but the, this whole process of getting rid of this rule or changing the rule will take a while. But also just keep in mind, the rule wasn't being enforced anyway because there was a federal stay on the rule. And another thing the executive order says, it says, hey, federal courts, hold off on doing anything with this waters, waters of the United States rule with your proceedings on this uh, until, we, until we do this reconsideration of the rule. So there's all this stuff going on, but the basic idea of this executive order is to 
The, the basic goal of it is to get rid of this Waters of the United States rule, which was passed by the Obama administration EPA in 2015, in which a number of people thought was unconstitutional. And in these remarks coming up by President Trump when he signs the rule, uh, when he signs the executive order about the rule, I'm sorry, you'll see that a big consideration of President Trump and people who wanted him to sign this executive order was that they thought that this, when, when you give the, the waters of the United States rule by giving the federal government control over these really small waterways, it creates an exe excessive burden on like small businesses and small property owners. Because for example, if you have a creek in the back of your house uh, or the back of your business and you want to modify the property somehow, if, if this property, if this creek is under the purview of like the EPA, this means that you might have to file for really costly permits. It might be, mean you're subject to these big fines. Um, so it makes, according to people who supported this executive order, a big reason for doing so was that this Waters of the United States rule was excessively burdensome on people who might have a small body of water on their property or in their, on, their, on their home property or on their business property, and it makes it just difficult or too expensive or impossible for them to modify their property in some way. Uh, and these people would also say these small bodies of water were not meant to be originally covered by the Clean Water Act, and the EPA just unilaterally declared that they were covered by the Clean Water Act. So if you go online and research, you can see these specific businesses, but a number of like business groups uh, of much, many different kinds, uh, and I think farmers groups too, uh, were supporting of this executive order today because they thought that the waters of the United States rule that was passed by the EPA under the Obama administration was a burdensome rule. It was going to cost small businesses and homeowners and small far and farmers. It was going to cost them money and be burdensome. So President Trump in this, uh, you'll see in the video about this executive order, he presents it as a pro-business, uh, pro-farmer, just pro-small business thing that will help small businesses get out of regular, uh, uh, avoid a, a, a burdensome regulation. And this also, you can see this is part of President Trump has been talking a lot over the last couple of weeks about how he wants to lower regulations and get rid of unnecessary regulations to help businesses. And this executive order, I think, can be seen as part of that thought on the part of President Trump. So with that all explained, you can now, we will now show you President Trump's remarks on uh, the executive order he signed today about the waters of the United States rule. And also just a reminder that tonight you can see on Right Side Broadcasting, President Trump's address to the joint session of Congress. We are broadcasting it live here on Right Side Broadcasting. The speech itself starts at 9. Eastern. And the pre-show, I will be here for the pre-show. You can join me for the pre-show starting at 8 Eastern. So we hope you join us for our coverage tonight of President Trump's very important speech. But for now, uh, enjoy President Trump's remarks on the waters of the United States executive order. Well, thank you very much. We love West Virginia. Thank you. This was just handed to me. Make counties great again. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Hold that for me. I'll take this. Well, thank you, everybody. We appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to congratulate Scott Pruitt, who's here someplace. Where is Scott? So important. We're going to free up our country, and it's going to be done in a very environmental and positive environmental way, I will tell you that. But create millions of jobs. So many jobs are delayed for so many years, and it's unfair to everybody. So I want to congratulate Scott. I want to thank everyone for being here today. We have a great group of farmers. Home builders and county commissioners, they're all represented. They're standing alongside of me. I'd also like to thank Jim Inhofe, who's been so terrific in so many different ways, beyond even this. So I want to thank Jim. And also the leadership in the Senate on issue, a friend of mine, a great friend of mine, John Barrasso. Uh, EPA's so-called Waters of the United States rule is one of the worst examples of federal regulation, and it has truly run amok, and is one of the rules most strongly opposed by farmers, ranchers, and agricultural workers all across our land. It's prohibiting them from being allowed 
to do what they're supposed to be doing. It's been a disaster. The Clean Waters Act says that the EPA can regulate navigable waters, meaning waters that truly affect interstate commerce. But a few years ago, the EPA decided that navigable waters can mean nearly every puddle or every ditch on a farmer's land or any place else that they decide, right? It was a massive power grab. The EPA's regulators were putting people out of jobs by the hundreds of thousands. And regulations and permits started treating our wonderful small farmers and small businesses as if they were a major industrial polluter. They treated them horribly, horribly. If you want to build a new home, for example, you have to worry about getting hit with a huge fine if you fill in as much as a puddle, just a puddle on your lot. I've seen it. In fact, when it was first shown to me, I said, no, you're kidding, aren't you? But they weren't kidding. In one case in Wyoming, a rancher was fined $37,000 a day by the EPA for digging his small watering hole for his cattle, his land. These abuses were and are why such incredible opposition to this rule from the hundreds of organizations took place in all 50 states. It's a horrible, horrible rule. Has sort of a nice name, but everything else is bad. <laughs> I've been hearing about it for years and years. I didn't know I'd necessarily be in this position to do something about it, but we've been hearing about it for years. With today's executive order, I'm directing the EPA to take action, paving the way for the elimination of this very destructive and horrible rule. So I want to thank everybody for being here, and I will sign wherever I'm supposed to sign. There we are. Thank you very much.